Today I talk about how to enforce management policies in a data center with limited resources. Managing data center's network involves different kind of policies, and these policies are applied using rules. For example, to limit the communication between two tenants, we use an access control policy. Rates limiting, traffic measurement, and traffic engineering are other examples for a policy. A rule is an action on a set of ranges on flow fields. A few examples for the actions are to deny a packet accepted to forward normally or uh, enqueued for curious enforcement. Flow fields examples are source and destination IP protocol or source and destination port. To give an example, R1 is an accept rule on source and destination IP fields. In this presentation, I show uh, rules uh, in a two-dimensional fluid space using rectangles. Here, R1 is defined using the blue rectangle parallel to the axis. If the rules overlap with each other, uh, only the rule with the highest priority uh, will take effect. So I show the rule with the highest priority in front of the others. Here, uh, R2 uh, has deny action and uh, has lower priority. Note that real-world rules are more complex and have more dimensions. In the current practice, uh, data center operators save rules uh, on predefined fixed machines. For example, they save rules uh, only on hypervisors at, at servers or just the internal switches. But machines have limited resources, and uh, as a result, they can only support a limited number of rules. For example, the rule capacity of the switches and network interface cards is limited by the power-hungry TCAM memory. Software switches also use CPU. CPU is a valuable resource that can be used by end users and make money, so the operators may set a CPU budget for the software switches. A lot of research has proposed mechanisms that uh, will result in many rules in future data centers. One body of work uses VLANs per servers, for example, for traffic management. Imagine a data center with 100K servers. These policies will need uh, millions of rules in that data center. In that data center, we can easily have uh, 100 million flows, and if we want per flow decision, for example, for traffic uh, engineering, the number of rules will be huge. There are also some policies uh, that define rules for every communicating VM, VM pair, for example, for uh, access control or bandwidth allocation. For these policies, also, the number of rules can be huge. Note that in a single data center, multiple policies can concurrently running. For example, we can compose uh, multiple policies using a proposal we have seen in the morning. So it is not always possible to save the rules on the, sh uh, on the ideal place, and we need to offload them. In this work, we use uh, the fact that rule location creates a trade-off between the resource usage and bandwidth usage in the data center. For example, whenever a hypervisor is overloaded, we can move the rule to the top of rack switch. As a result, we need to forward traffic there, and we may have traffic overhead if the rule is denied. In another example, if the top of rack switch is full, we may decide to offload rules to other servers or switches. For example, here we offload an accept rule to, the, uh, to a server, and the server is out of the shortest path of the flows, uh, so we have traffic overhead. But this off rule offloading scheme must handle several challenges, and I show the challenges using a concrete example. Consider the two-dimensional fluid space with seven rules. Here, blue rules accept the traffic, red rules deny, and the green rule is just a default rule. We have uh, six servers connected using five switches, and we define eight VMs with their associated IP addresses and assign them to the servers. Now, to handle the traffic from VM2 and VM6 on server S1, we need to save these rules in the network. Source placement approach that saves rules on the uh, source of traffic, say S1 here, has minimum traffic because it blocks unnecessary traffic before entering the network. But if the source is infeasible, we may decide to offload some rules. For example, we decided to offload just a rule R4 on Tor 1 and save others on the uh, server S1. 
but rules overlap with each other, and the dependencies between the overlapping rules uh, can result in incorrect rule processing. Here, for example, S1 blocks the traffic matching rules R1 and R3 that should have been accepted by the rule R4. So the offloading scheme must uh, preserve the semantics of overlapping rules. It must also respect the memory and CPU resource constraints among uh, devices, and these resource constraints can be heterogeneous. The next challenge is how to minimize the traffic overhead caused by the, by the offloading uh, of the rules. The, the system also uh, should handle uh, the dynamics such as uh, traffic and load changes and VM dynamics such as VM migration. In this work, we propose vCrib, a virtual cloud rule information base. vCrib provides a rule placement abstraction layer for the operators to define rules without worrying about the rule placement and resource constraints in the network. It gathers the information about network resources and traffic and places the rules both on hypervisors and switches to optimize the, uh, the traffic given the resource constraints and changes. So vCrib receives rules and generates a minimum traffic feasible placement. To handle uh, overlapping rules, we propose a novel partitioning scheme. Here, partitions play the role of an independent chunk of rules that can be placed anywhere in the network without changing the semantic of overlapping rules. So a partition is a set of rules. If we cut rules into multiple partitions to have smaller partitions to get more flexibility in minimizing the traffic overhead, we ended up with rule inflation. Instead of cutting, we propose partitioning with replication, where we keep rules in their original shape in the partitions. For example, here we have three partitions, P1, P2, and P3. Now, if we save uh, the part two partitions on the same device, we can easily merge the common uh, rules uh, by comparing their IDs. For example, here, if we save partitions P2 and P3 on the same device, we only need to save the rules R0, R1, and R3. Only they, we only need to save them once. This introduces the concept of similarity between partitions that allows us to have small partitions by mitigating inflation. Here, the similarity of partitions P2 and P3 is three rules. Now that we can have small partitions with low inflation, we decide uh, to create a partition per source IP. Per source partitions use limited resources at the source of traffic uh, for forwarding uh, the traffic to the current host of the partition. We don't need to replicate them because each partition has traffic only from one server. And in the placement algorithm, we can find uh, similar partitions faster because we have proved that closer partitions in the source IP dimension have more common rules and as a result they are more, com uh, more similar. So now that we have partitions, we need to address resource constraints and uh, minimize the traffic overhead. Assigning partitions to the devices to minimize the traffic overhead, even without considering the similarity of partitions, is equal to a generalized assignment problem, which is NP-hard and even hard to approximate. But we have a two-step approach to address that problem. In the first step, we, we generate a feasible placement using a resource ever placement algorithm. And in the second step, we uh, refine that feasible placement to minimize the traffic overhead. Finding a feasible solution is similar to beam packing problem, but with objects that can overlap with each other. And to find the best solution, it's important to consider the overlappings of the objects caused by similarity of partitions. We present first fit decreasing similarity algorithm that first puts a random partition on an empty device and then adds the most similar partitions to the initial partition until the device is full. And it does that uh, for all uh, devices to uh, accommodate all partitions in the network. 
We found the lower bound for the optimal solution for a specific problem on rules and proved that this algorithm is a true approximation of that lower bound. Then we, uh, then we abstracted the concept of similarity for heterogeneous uh, devices using a device-dependent resource usage function. So now we can handle uh, uh, heterogeneous resources. The last module is the traffic verifiment that tries to minimize the traffic overhead given a feasible placement. The feasible solution may save uh, the partitions far from uh, the sources or the shortest path of the flows because it doesn't consider the traffic overhead and just finds a feasible placement. A simple approach to minimize the traffic overhead, which we call overhead greedy algorithm, is to just pick the partition with maximum overhead and put it where it minimizes its overhead and maintains the feasibility of uh, the placement. For example, here partition P2 and P4 are far from the sources, and we can just migrate them to the sources S1 and S4 here. But in the SA state, there are many partitions in their sweet spot with minimum traffic overhead, and this algorithm cannot bring them out, so it falls in local minima in handling dynamics. For example, suppose that VM2 with large traffic moves from S1 to S4, and S4 can handle only one partition. This algorithm cannot bring out partition P4, so it just migrates partition uh, P1, P2 from S1 to Tor2. We propose benefit greedy algorithm that evaluates the benefit of a migration step based on both the traffic reduction and a popularity factor for a device. So this algorithm can avoid the local minima that overhead greedy algorithm has. And in this case, it can successfully bring partition P4 out of its uh, server and replace it with P2. I refer you uh, to the paper uh, for uh, the uh, detail of this uh, algorithm. Now, to handle dynamics such as rule changes and uh, VM additions, uh, we rerun the resource ever placement algorithm if they make a feasible solution infeasible. But for frequent dynamics such as traffic changes and most of uh, VM migrations, that keep the solution feasible, we don't need to rerun a resource of a placement, and we just run the refinement algorithm. And this is one of the advantages of having a two-step approach. So to recap, vCrypt design addresses all five challenges, ranging from over overlapping rules uh, to the dynamics. For evaluation, we compared vCrypt versus source placement. Remember that source placement is the current practice that saves rules uh, on the source of traffic. We also did some uh, parameter sensitivity analysis and checked where the traffic overhead is added in the network. We also did some uh, experiments uh, for online scenarios and heterogeneous resources, and also for cases where we can only save rules on the switches. But in this uh, presentation, I show the results only for the comparison of vCrypt and source placement and the effect of rules in partitions on vCrypt performance, and uh, refer you to the paper for other experiments and diagrams. So in the simulation, we had 1,000 servers in a fat tree network, and we generated 200k rules using the classbench rule generator. We have two ways of IP assignment random that assigns IPs randomly to the VMs on servers, and range that assigns a range of IP to the VMs on each server. Flow sizes follow a long tail distribution based on previous measurement papers, and uh, they follow a local traffic matrix by default. In a case that source placement needs 5K rules in maximum, VCRIB could successfully find a solution for servers with 4K capacity. In this diagram, the y-axis is the traffic overhead ratio of VCRIB comparing to the source placement, and the x-axis shows the capacity of the servers and switches. 
Let's, let's look to the case that uh, the capacity of the servers is 4K and we cannot save anything on the uh, internal uh, switches. The range IP assignment has very low overhead because in this case, similar partitions have traffic from the same source. So the compressed solution has minimum traffic too. The random IP assignment has a larger traffic overhead, but we should note that it is an adversarial case for vCrypt because the average load on the machines for source placement uh, was 4.2K. This means that it needs more memory than the capacity of all the servers combined. This shows that vCrypt could successfully, uh, could successfully uh, find the similar partitions and uh, put them on the same device to find uh, the feasible placement. Also, if we add more resources in the internal uh, switches, vCrypt could successfully use those resources to minimize the traffic overhead. But source placement still is unable to use uh, the resources in internal switches. More interesting question is to what extent vCrypt extends the operating range of data centers. And we check that by comparing the effect of rules in partitions on vCrypt performance. If the dark blue disk here shows the total problem in space, we know that source placement can only cover a, a small subset of the problems. The bound of this set is defined by the maximum load on the server. vCrypt covers more, but it's hard to define its bound. So we explode the effect of two important factors of uh, the rules in partitions on vCrypt performance average similarity of the partitions and average partition size. And we did that by transforming the rules in a rule set. Note that the similarity cannot be more than the average partition size. Here, the highlighted area shows where we could find a feasible solution. The shaded area shows that the shaded area shows that uh, we, it's more likely for vCrypt to find a feasible solution for smaller partitions or larger partitions that are, that are more similar. We can also restrict the area to the cases that uh, vCrypt solution has less than 10% traffic overhead. For example, here, the point A is feasible, but its traffic overhead is larger than 10%. But the conclusion is the same. Uh, VCRIP has lower traffic overhead for a smaller and more similar partitions. So in conclusion, VCRIP allows operators uh, to specify rules and manage their placement in a way that respects resource constraints and minimizes the traffic overhead. And for future work, we want to add, us, uh, we, we want to add uh, the controller in uh, the decision loop to let uh, vCrypt decide which rules should be handled reactively at the controller and which rules should be handled proactively in the network. We also want to check the effect of breaking a large source partition and also test our system for other load sets. Thank you. People can hear you. Uh, I see. Uh, well, I talk loud, so maybe okay. people wouldn't have a problem. So I have a question. So suppose I'm an operator, and what are the constraints that I want to place on the rule uh, on the rule optimization process? Is that I want to limit the amount of rule changes that happen at any one time, mm -hmm. just because I'm concerned that you know if I change things too drastically, that's going to cause some problems. Okay. Uh, is there a way to incorporate that easily into the optimization framework that you described? I see. So in that case, you need to limit uh, the refinement algorithm and uh, set a budget for that. And I think it can be a, um, a good future work that, for example, if, if we find a good motivation for that limit, we can set that uh, in, the, in the optimization algorithm. But you would expect that like, uh, this thing can find a feasible placement uh, with unconstrained, but if I put some constraints on it, it would probably still be able to find feasible solutions, or do you think that would be? 
more than one. I see. So you're talking about finding a feasible placement, not defining for minimizing the traffic overhead. Yeah. That's Go, right. that's okay. Right. Yeah. So finding the feasible placement. Uh, okay. So. Uh, when, when we find a feasible placement, actually, we, we do not uh, uh, consider the previous placement because they can be migrated arbitrarily uh, to minimize the traffic overhead. So now, uh, this algorithm uh, doesn't consider that. And um, maybe we have uh, as kind of similar algorithms in VM placement that, for example, they don't want to uh, migrate uh, VMs so often. So yeah, maybe we can find a similar algorithms here. I have another question. What is driving the explosion in the number of rules? Like, why is this such a big scalability challenge? Like, I don't have a good intuition for what's causing, you know, like hundreds of thousands of rules and things mm -hmm. like that. Can you say a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's because of the uh, different policies we have now and uh, the scale of the data center. That, for example, we want to control the communication of between a uh, pair of VMs, and uh, I see that every every year there are some proposals that use these rules uh, to uh, create a new a new service uh, in the data center. For example, rate limiting or traffic engineering. So when we talk, when we use software-defined networking, we also need to consider that what happens if the number of rules will be huge and we don't have uh, enough resources. So you expect rules for like, say, every pair of VMs or something, that's not? No, 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 no every pair of communicating VMs. Yeah, yeah, okay. 